Welcome to video 9 in a series of introductory videos for SolidCam. This video's topic is 3D eye machining toolpath. So if you've seen eye machining before, uh, if you've seen video 8, you've seen how 2D eye machining works, this is the 3D version of that toolpath. And we'll see how we'll set it up and how similar it is to uh, the overall eye machining toolpath that you've probably seen in previous videos. To access the 3D eye machining, you can either do so in your SolidCam operations tab under eye machining, or you can go to SolidCam 3D and it has its own icon there. Or like I've seen me do in previous videos, I go the old way, right click on operations folder, add milling operation, 3D eye machining. So to highlight how the 3D toolpath 3D eye machining works, I'm gonna do it on the back side of this part. So I'm just gonna switch it to my Mac 2. And uh, 3D eye machining is what we call a target-based toolpath. So we're, as you've seen in previous toolpaths where you're choosing a chain or a surface, here the geometry is the target itself, the target that we would have defined when we first created the part. So this toolpath is going to look at the overall solid and do all the features possible with the tool that I'm about to select. We'll just go through that now. Tool. Tool selection is the same as all the other toolpaths. I'm just going to choose my half-inch end mill. And you'll see that because it's eye machining, it's going to use that definition of my machine, my material, and now the definition of my tool to calculate fees and speeds for me. Now, if you don't know how to set up your machine and your material for the purpose of eye machining, I'll refer you back to video eight where I covered that as well. Going forward, here's levels. Now, in a target-based toolpath such as 3D eye machining, the levels are not uh, the beginning and end of the toolpath, but just how much of the target we'd like it to machine. So in this case, I'm going to start from the top of the stock, and I'm actually going to tell it the lower level is the bottom of the stock. I want it to look at the entire stock and machine the stock to look like the target in between those two levels. Technology Wizard, once again, controls the, uh, the aggressiveness of that calculation. And once again, to see how this works, to get an explanation of how this works, I refer you to video eight, where I covered that under 2D eye machining. Under technology, again, we have our wall and floor offsets. We also have a third dimension here to control, the scallop. And that is actually, if you look in the top, bottom left corner, the height of the scallops, the height of those triangles that are gonna be left behind on any curvature or any uh, tapered faces. And again, this is a 3D toolpath, so we wanna have that sort of control. We usually recommend that that number should be the same as your wall and floor offset. That way you'll have a nice uniform roughed out part. So let's just do a save and calculate on that. There is a taper on this side and this side of the part, so that's why I'm doing it on the back side of the part. You can see that the the control the calculation of the 3D eye machining is by level. So what it's actually doing is slicing up the, the target by level to see how it can apply what's going to look like a 2D eye machining, but on a 3D basis. So if we just close this window, you'll kind of see how that works. It still has that helical entry to the very deep part of the of this uh, of this target. In this case, that center pocket. It's doing the, the morphing spiral on the flat areas. It's actually doing the morphing spiral on the outside of the part as well. And you can see that they all look like 2D eye machining. It's basically just sliced up the target and applied 2D eye machining to those, to those areas. Now, the thing to note here is, again, it's a 3D toolpath. So it noticed those tapered areas and some of those fillets as well. And the scallop level that I told it to use, it actually applied it to those tapered areas. So you can see, even though it's a very gradual taper, you can see that it actually added those, those steps there. And if we do a solid verify on that, you'll see actually how that works. I'll just slow it down just a little bit for the purpose of demonstration. So again, what looks like a 2D morphing spiral eye machining. There were those side pockets there, so it's machining out as much as it can using that tool. So that half inch end mill probably can't do the tricotal movement inside that slot, so it didn't go all the way. But you do see now the scallops being formed on those tapered faces. Okay. And you can also see how it's looking at the target. So it recognized the center pocket, those those slots on the sides there. If you have 3D eye machining, I often say it should be your first toolpath because really what you're doing is you're just fully roughing out the part. At this point, uh, I could probably do uh, some secondary operations to, to uh, finish off those slots, but I could easily go right into finishing with a ball nose or a bull nose. Speaking of those slots, let's actually hide the toolpath there. Um, the tool that I used was too large to go in those slots. So like you saw in video eight with 2D eye machining, there is a rest option 
to the 3D eye machining, but it's actually easier to use than the 2D eye machining. And I'll show you how that works. So first, let me do a save and copy. Okay, so we have a copy of this toolpath. It's still looking at the target. It's still looking at the target through those levels. The only thing I'm gonna do here is change the tool selection to my tool two, which is my quarter inch end mill. I'll just rev that machining level back up. And once I hit save and calculate, you'll see that it's updating the stock. So because 3D eye machining works off of the updated stock, this second 3D eye machining will automatically be a rest milling operation. It'll automatically notice that the only material left over is that what was left behind by my previous tool. Okay, so if we take a look at that toolpath, the only thing left was the slots, obviously, because the tool cannot fit, and possibly these corners, again, because the tool cannot fit in those corners. So automatically, the second, the third, and so on, the more copies of 3D eye machining you, you put in there, it'll continue to do a rest milling operation. Now, it's a target-based toolpath, so it's looking at the target as its geometry. It's gonna machine out everything, but there are ways to limit that calculation. Imagine you have a large piece and uh, you don't want to sit there for, for, uh, for the calculation of the entire part, especially if you're doing a rest milling operation. You probably don't want to do a rest mill on the whole piece and wait for it to choose all the corners. You know where those corners are. You want to limit that, that calculation to a particular area of the target. So we actually have the ability to do so. And I'll do that real quick here with another 3D eye machining, this time on Mac 1 position 1. So my top side that we're looking at here with all the features inside there, but we've already roughed out everything on the outside. I know I just want to focus on the inside there, or in the previous case, I said, this is a large part. I want to focus on a certain area. Well, with the working area, we can actually limit the scope of this calculation of this toolpath by engaging the working area, clicking on define. And that brings us to our chain selection window that we saw in videos five and six. So to see how exactly how to use this window, refer you to videos five and six, the pocket and the profile toolpath. So I'm just gonna choose this edge right here, constant V propagation. So the chain that I selected is only for that inside pocket. The working area, you can define it as four different ways. This is basically how I'm using this chain. So the first one is the one we're currently looking at in the bottom of the corner here, external. So I'm telling SolidCam, I wanna machine only what's inside of that window but I'm allowing it to leave that window to reposition itself. Um, this is good for just telling SolidCAM to focus on machining what's inside the window, which is the case we're doing here. So if I just do OK, save and calculate, uh, this is a new tool pass, so I needed to choose the tool. So let's go with my half inch levels. Again, the levels are how far into the part I'd like it to look. So we're doing the inside pocket, so it will actually stop at this surface here, but by telling it to look at the entire stock, um, I can take care of things like if there's a through pocket or anything like that, as long as the tool can go that deep. Let's just rev that up. And I'm not too worried about this because there are no tapers in there. So just do a save and calculate. Again, it's updating the stock to see what material is left over from side, side two, basically, the previous operations. And you see the calculations are going through again, slicing up that inside area. And once it completes, we'll see the toolpath. Now this was the inside pocket using a external type of working area. So you can see it only focused on machining on the inside, but it actually allow, I allowed it to morph on the outside there. So you can see that it actually is only focusing on what's inside that contour, but it's morphing spiral on the outside. Now, if I wanted to use the working area in a way to limit the travel even further, let's say the working area um, is denoting some area that I need to absolutely stay inside of. I can't let the tool wander outside that area. Well, I can use internal. And again, bottom left corner shows us that the full diameter of the tool will stay inside of that chain and it'll only reposition inside of that chain. So let's take a look at what that does. So again, once again, do a save and calculate. Calculation is by level, so it's actually going to slice up the inside determine what pockets are there, what steps are there. And once that completes, we'll see what the toolpath looks like. Okay, so you can see it fully machined everything inside the pocket and only repositioned itself inside the pocket. And just to finish off the discussion of the working area, the other two options are center and tangent. And basically what that is, is it's kind of versions of the previous two. It's allowing the tool to travel only as far as the center of the tool to that chain. And likewise with tangent, same thing. 
it only goes as far as it remains tangent with that chain. So that is 3D eye machining. It's very easy to use, very powerful toolpath as well. And um, if you keep uh, creating more and more, it'll actually uh, step down the tool. It'll go further and further into machining the part. With this toolpath alone, you should be able to fully rough out your part and then go right into doing any kind of finishing toolpath. If you have any further questions about this or any other toolpaths that are seen in the videos, you can give us a call back at 1-866-975-1115, extension 2, or stay tuned for the rest of the videos that cover the other topics. Thank you for watching.